Hi, I'm Gavin McDaniel. I'm the Roadway Design Criteria Administrator in the Central Office. Myself, along with Alan Miller Folly, are going to be talking about crosswalk visibility enhancements. So there are several elements that may be used alone or in combination to enhance the crosswalk visibility. I'm going to be speaking about the crosswalk marking styles, the advanced stop or yield signs with signs, um, lighting, curb extensions, and parking restrictions on crosswalk approach. Alan's going to be speaking to the pedestrian warning signs on approach at crosswalk and in-street pedestrian crossing signs. So this graphic uh, shows how many of these elements may be used in combination to provide a more effective and visible crossing. This example shows uh, curb extensions, high visibility markings, which are we call special emphasis markings, overhead lighting, and in-street signs on a two-lane roadway. Keep in mind as we go through this presentation and we talk about each one of these countermeasures how much more effective they can be when they're combined with other ones. So just keep that in mind. So the uh, FDOT design manual, otherwise known as the FDM, uh, chapter 222 is entitled Pedestrian Facilities. And in this chapter, we also reference other publications that are critical to uh, the design and have other criteria. Um, the standard plans actually show uh, construction details, and the traffic engineering manual has additional design criteria, and the speed zoning manual has criteria for school zone crossings. The criteria contained in the FDM is for signalized intersections, roundabouts, stop and yield controlled intersections, and mid-block crosswalks. So the DOT criteria, uh, we use special emphasis markings for signalized intersections, roundabouts, and mid-block crosswalks. However, we use the standard markings for stop or yield controlled intersections. This is a graphic of the standard plans index 711-001, which shows the construction details for both the standard uh, crosswalk markings and the special emphasis markings. In this, uh, in this example, uh, we can see the benefits of the high visibility or special emphasis uh, crosswalk markings. On the left-hand side, on the top left, you can see what the pedestrian might see at a standard crosswalk, and on the bottom left, you can see what a vehicle might see. Now, there are a lot of variables in these conditions. As you can see, the color of the pavement versus the color of the marking and in this example we have a shadow from a tree. So there are a lot of, there are a lot of external factors involved in the visibility for both the uh, pedestrian and the, uh, and the driver, more importantly the driver. Uh, on the right you can see an ideal condition where the pedestrian has the special emphasis crosswalk, but you can see the bottom right uh, where the driver would have a, a, uh, much improved visibility as they approach the crosswalk to be aware that there would be a possibility for a pedestrian to be entering the roadway. So as you can see here, um, the driver um, with the special emphasis crosswalk provides a better warning and a uh, better viewing angle and more advanced warning for the driver. Florida uses both the lateral and longitudinal markings for our special emphasis crosswalks. For multi-lane conditions on a mid-block scenario, um, there is a concern that we have where, in, in, and this is the depiction of the possible concerns we have, uh, where car A would stop short of the crosswalk, very close to the crosswalk, and then would block the line of sight between the pedestrian and the other car, car B. In this scenario, when car A stops, it blocks that line of sight, and car B may just proceed through the crosswalk without seeing the pedestrian. With the introduction of the stop or yield sign uh, that is in advance of the crosswalk, the car A would stop further back from the crosswalk, opening that line of sight for, between the pedestrian and the car B, and allow car B a time to react to the pedestrian in the crosswalk. So the FDM has figures that show the stop controlled condition, which is the requirement for the FDOT facilities. However, the Florida Green Book allows both the use of the yield condition and stop conditions. I'm going to talk a little bit about pedestrian lighting, which is a very effective countermeasure for nighttime pedestrian crashes between vehicles and pedestrians. This has a CERF of 
42% to 59%, and a four-star rating, which gives us a lot of confidence in the countermeasure. You notice the pedestrian in the crosswalk wearing black. A lot of our pedestrians don't necessarily think about the fact that they're out there at nighttime or you know, uh, dress quite the way they probably should when they're walking out at night. So the lighting is very critical for the visibility of pedestrians. Uh, taking a look at this graphic, we can see the figure on the left, which is you know, typically what we've seen in the past. In some cases, the lighting might not even have been directly over, but in the wrong position, um, in, in the office position. But if you look at the left, you see uh, the figure below with the lady that looks like a silhouette. Um, if, the, if the lighting is not positioned in the right location, it could produce that type of effect which the driver sees. On the right side, we see the correct position of the lighting where the lighting is in between the approaching vehicle and the pedestrian. And that provides that vertical illumination on the pedestrian, which makes them more visible. So the, the location of these lighting is very critical to the effectiveness. The SDOT design manual has actual vertical luminance criteria um, for these crosswalks. And for the signalized intersection lighting, we have new construction criteria and lighting retrofit criteria. Lighting retrofit criteria is uh, in recognition for the fact that there's a lot of um, conflicts and a lot of things competing for space in the right-of-way. And uh, there may be some uh, countermeasures or some locations where you could mount light fixtures that might not be optimal, but something is better than nothing. So we have some minimum criteria for lighting retrofits uh, for those locations. All right, I'm going to talk a little bit about uh, these curb extensions or bulb outs, uh, these are used in conjunction with on-street parking. As you can see in the bottom right here, I kind of wanted to point this out because we do talk a little bit about uh, allowing places for furniture out there. But uh, you know, this might not be the ideal scenario where you have a newspaper stand, garbage cans that block the vision or the visibility of small children or people in wheelchairs. So if you do use furniture out there, just be mindful that we still need the clear line of sight with anything that's out there. The main purpose of the curb extension is to reduce the crossing distance of the pedestrians. There are a lot of other advantages, um, including the improving the visibility between the pedestrians and motorists. It also has a, a traffic calming effect for the motorists traveling through the corridor. Um, the, the, more, the, the more squeezed in they feel, the, the slower speeds they travel, and they're just aware of, of you know, there's other things in there they need to kind of watch out for. Here's an example of, you know, a graphic showing the visibility improvements between the bicyclist, motorist, and the pedestrian. And you notice how the bulb out does not extend through the bicycle uh, facility there as well. The FDOT design manual, uh, section 222, has some criteria on curb extensions and bulb outs. And here's an example of uh, an intersection, a four-legged intersection, uh, before and after. Uh, this shows, uh, pay, pay attention to the 64-foot and 55-foot crossing distances, that, uh, distances there. And with the addition of these bulb outs, you can see that we haven't made any change to the operation of the intersection. However, we've decreased the crossing distance factor around 16 to 17 feet, which is very very uh, good, especially with elderly pedestrians, and it helps them clear that intersection a lot faster. One thing we like to note also is on these uh, curb extensions, the turning radius, we would like to have smaller turning radius to slow down that right-hand turn speed movements from the vehicles. Another consideration with curb extensions is the drainage associated with it. You know, for new construction, well, we can handle that, you know, as we need to, but however, for retrofit conditions, um, that creates some issues. So we don't want people to not or be discouraged from placing these curb extensions or bulb outs due to drainage. There's some innovative solutions that we've seen. These here, these are some examples that we saw in Tampa as we were walking through there just a couple weeks ago of some solutions for drainage and to use as existing facilities. And just curb extension can also be integrated into the sidewalks to give that a more natural feel and to just kind of like, you know, give that uh, appearance of just that condensed corridor for the drivers. I'm going to turn this over to Alan to talk more about the other items.
All right. Thank you, Gavin. Good morning, all. And uh, I recognize some, some people in the uh, participants. So uh, for those that know me uh, and for those that do not know me, this is Alan lr uh, I'm uh, the State Traffic Services Program Engineer. I uh, work here in Tallahassee from Central Office. Um, and also been uh, involved in a lot of, um, you know, initiatives, uh, as you may he heard of, of the ICE program and all that, but uh, that's another <laughs> subject we'll talk about sometime soon. Uh, so let's get into it. Uh, pedestrian warning signs. Many of you know uh, the uh, W11-2, that's, that's the advanced warning uh, sign uh, for pedestrian crosswalk or uh, the, uh, the existence of a pedestrian crossing that, uh, that is used uh, uh, for Florida on, on system roads. Uh, our specifications requires the use of uh, type 11 sheeting, which is the fluorescent green uh, that you see on the, on the left there. Um, on uh, off system, uh, basically also is that you can, you can have the, uh, the the regular sheeting that you see on the right. <clears throat> Many of you have seen these uh, highlighted signs or L uh, embedded LED signs, uh, which basically they are uh, approved to, to be used in Florida, and they're on the uh, APL uh, approved product list. Um, what they are is basically an enhancement of an existing sign under the MUTCD um, an enhancement, as you, many of you know, may be, you know, like flags or other uh, 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 enhanced conspicuity um, methods to uh, bring attention uh, to the sign. So uh, we do have these on the APL. Uh, you could get the W11-2 or the stop sign or other signs that, uh, that can be used. And Research has shown uh, a reduction in the number of vehicles not not fully uh, stopping and uh, and and an improvement uh, when when used. We also have uh, the uh, speed limit sign for school zones. Um, the speed zoning manual uh, has been amended uh, and and published uh, January of this year. Uh, we've made some changes. Uh, to allow this type of sign also, so they can be flashed uh, at the same uh, frequency as using a, a, a standard uh, uh, flashing beacon. Uh, and uh, when combined with, uh, you know, the, the controller and the other devices that make it uh, active during the school time of periods, uh, they, uh, they, they are, they are effective. Uh, the in-street pedestrian crossing signs are another uh, METCD treatment for uh, uh, crosswalks. Um, there's the stop or the yield uh, based on the state law. Uh, state law in Florida is uh, we use the stop for pedestrians uh, as a requirement. Uh, the METCD allows a yield. Uh, but uh, that's in, in the state of Florida, we use both on system would be for the stop. And they're very effective. Uh, we are actually doing a request to experiment that basically uh, we received in November of 2017. Uh, Federal Highway has issued that, uh, that request to experiment for us. We're, we're looking at uh, and studying 30 sites around the state of Florida. Uh, to uh, incorporate the, what we call the uh, gateway treatment effect. As many of you know the, uh, or maybe have heard of, the gateway treatment is actually a, uh, providing um, a sign on both sides of the approach, uh, including one in uh, the travel uh, lane uh, or the lane line uh, as, as, uh, to, to make the effect of a, of a gateway. So. Uh, the require or the option to use it on the right is the, re the is the request to experiment, and uh, that's moving along very well. Uh, we've already uh, studied approximately 18 sites uh, with uh, definitely good beha uh, yielding behavior from the from these applications. Uh, we do have a e-traffic website that's uh, available for the public to view. It's on our uh, Web, it's on our uh, share website. Uh, you can actually connect to it by just uh, 
typing in uh, FDOTE traffic uh, into Google, uh, and you get this. Uh, it uh, has many layers. It's an interactive uh, application that uh, lets you see where there's uh, where the R1-6A uh, request to experiment uh, locations are lo are are uh, located, uh, and give you an example of. Uh, um, uh, what they look like there on the right. We do have one at the Burns Building, by the way, uh, that uh, if, if you all in Tallahassee. Uh, there, the study uh, that you see on the, on the left over there is uh, the Michigan, uh, uh, Western Michigan University uh, study that uh, we are actually uh, co-sponsoring with uh, Michigan DOT. Um, we, we're uh, Pretty much two states are actually doing this uh, and uh, experimenting with it, and uh, Michigan was the first. So uh, kudos to them, but uh, we're also uh, getting on board. If, uh, if you want to take a look at that study, that's the uh, link over there, and, or you can Google it. A lot of yielding behavior uh, and, uh, and proof that uh, these signs are very effective. Um, and we're seeing from preliminary studies that uh, the yield for yield to pedestrian sign is more <coughs> operationally, um, uh, I would say, acceptable uh, rather than the stop. But uh, with further uh, research, we're going to we're going to see what the difference would be, uh, either using the yield or the stop. And with that, I'll give it to Duane.